Welcome to your Monday night Fulham Fix, the fortnightly show all about Fulham for you guys, the fans. And joining me today, a man who, upon signing his first professional contract for Fulham, used his first big paycheck to buy a pair of iceberg jeans. Yes. It's the one and only Sean Davis. How are you doing, Sean? I'm good, thanks. You? Yeah, good to be good, back. Man. Yeah, good to see you again, man. Yeah, good to see more you. positive. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of positive stuff to talk about today. Yeah. Uh, and a man who has made a massive impact on the club since he joined on loan at the start of this campaign is our number 14, Bobby Decker Dover Reed. Bobby, how are you? I'm good, thank you, mate. Thank you for joining us today. I was just asking what you were up to uh, this morning at mm -hmm. the club, and you were just talking about this box thing. Just explain, because yeah. uh, I don't know what this is, but you know exactly, you used to mm -hmm. do this as well. Yeah. So, well, so is, there was, there's three boxes, um, yeah. possession boxes, so there might be eight or nine players in there. Two in the middle, um, maximum of two touches, right. and basically you lose the ball, you go in the middle. So at the end of maybe it's two minutes each round, everyone votes anonymously to, to a staff member of the worst player, and the worst player has to go to another box, basically. Wow. Yeah. And dare I ask, can I say who was, who was the, the last box, man standing? Uh, in my box today, it was Kevin McDonald, um, surprisingly. Yeah. And other one was. I'm surprised about that. Luca Delatore. Really? Yeah. Wow. And you, so you said that you guys scrapped it when you used to do it. Yeah, Sylvain Lugvinsky used to get it all the time. But we, obviously, not just the boxes, we used to just vote on a Friday. We used to do worst player in training. I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah there Friday. Times yeah. Like that. And sometimes the worst player has to yeah. sing. Yeah, saying that when I was at Bristol sing. City, was it, when I was time? at Bristol City, I joined, and if you was the worst player, you had to sing. Mm. Did you have and to sing ever? No, I never had to sing. Thankfully, uh, even though I was poor. Uh, but did you have a song in mind a, just in case? Yeah, I, was, I would have sang the Wild Rover. It gets me out of trouble. Yeah. So yeah, but there was a French player. There. I can't remember his name, but he sang. Couldn't speak good English. He sang Wheels on the Bus. It was hilarious. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So because you you guys were kind of there um, at Bristol City because yeah. you were there. That uh, was your final place on loan, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I was on loan there about oh, what, uh, four weeks. Four trying weeks. Trying to get my yeah. Obviously, I was injured for two years. Yeah. So. Uh, to be fair, I had a good time there. It was a good bunch of lads. Obviously, training against yeah, the young years. You've been there for a year or two. I, young, I yeah. couldn't get the ball off him all session. It was one of those ones. I think it's time to, for me really? to hang up the boots. Could that, be, it could be part of their retirement. It could get part of retirement. So is he, my he retirement. the reason you had to retire? It could be, yeah. Wow. It could be. No, you could tell, you could tell he was a player back then. You yeah. could tell, yeah. And did you have to sing ever at Bristol City? Uh, yeah. What um, did you sing? I, my go to is Mario, Let Me Love You. Mario, that's the only one I know all the words to. Is that the under uh, a press let me situation. love you? Come on. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, okay. no, 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 um, so we're looking at, you know, we're gaining some momentum, finding some consistency. How important is that for the squad? It's massive. Um, back of three wins, and I think it's been deserved. A couple of clean sheets in there as well, and I think the lads, they deserve it because yeah. we've been working hard, and I know we've been conceding a few late goals in the past, but now I think it gets to a point where we know we're going to see our games. Um, yeah. And I know we could probably kill off games in the first half, but getting a win is... The best thing. It doesn't really matter how you get the win, I suppose, mm -hmm. in a way. Um, Hull as well, winning away at Hull, mm -hmm. that's huge. Now, were you aware that, that we've not won at Hull in a long time before you, you played no, the game? I found out after and, like I said, it was thankful that we, we stuck in there, yeah. hung in there and, and got the three points. Well, that's really good that, that you didn't know, but I do wonder, because we, we haven't won away at Hull uh, since 96, mm -hmm. apparently. When you have, a, I don't know, as a player, when you have like a, a bogey team like that, when you yeah. know you've got that, that place you can go and you always struggle, does it affect you as a player? Now, it would because Hull, that's yeah, your time. See, I, I, not knowing, I think we'd have done well for the lads. I don't know whether mm. Scotty's done it on purpose, yeah. not let them know. Because sometimes when you do know, it come, then it, it's on your mind. So mm. you think, oh, we need to break the duck. Like when I was at Fulham, we didn't win an away game for quite a while. Yeah. Under, under I think Chris I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember so, that. But then... It was well documented, and then it was trying different things, training times, mm. eating different foods, mm. meeting times, everything, just to try and change the cycle. But once you know about it, I think it plays on your mind. It becomes it adds a psychological to it. Yeah, thing. I think if you can just block it out and just try and just treat it as any other game, that normally works. I suppose, so for you that was a bit, and you've been at the club for such a long time as well, but I suppose for you, were there any players you know 
at the club, maybe the ones that have been there a bit longer, that had that on their mind at all? Or do you think everyone across the board were not aware that we had this this um, this sort of chip on our shoulder with Hull away? Um, not necessarily Hull, but I remember being at Bristol City yeah. and playing Fulham. We used to always really get decent results, so I think there was a bit of... Yeah. Talk there when Bristol City played here last. Yeah, yeah, it was always really frustrating. Yeah. yeah, so that's the only one I've, I'm noticeable of. Is I'm, Bristol City I remember uh, Tammy Abraham absolutely yeah. ruining us. Mm-hmm. One of the, just so scary every time he sort of touched the ball. That, yeah. was, a, that was a tough game. I think yeah. it was like 5 1 we were tonked or something. Or? 4 I think. So 4, four one, one, something like that. that. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was around the time where I uh, you know, just got so used to losing. It was, it was tough. <laughs> that was, it was a tough, tough season, yeah. It was a tough season. Mm-hmm. Can we be, uh, do you think, maybe slightly disappointed uh, with the Middlesbrough game and the fact that, that we didn't maybe score more in the first half? Because there was a point in that mm-hmm. game, the way we played, that mm-hmm. first half, some of the best football I've yeah. seen at the cottage all season, um, we just tore them apart. And there was a point where you thought, we, we're going to do them 4 or 5 nil at this point. Um, yeah, it was quite frustrating for myself as well. Mm. Um, had a few chances, should have put them away. But as a whole, we know we need to, to score two or three goals in the first half because... Yeah. We're so energetic and our high press is on at a time a team's going to get an upper hand on you, whether it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and not 1-0. I remember in a game, I remember them saying, just stay in the game, stay in the game. So they knew that they're going to get their time of 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So we, we needed to get more goals, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and it made it harder for us in the second half. But... We weathered the storm, so that's what matters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dennis Adoy as well uh, scored a late goal, was disallowed. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? Strange. Person. It was strange. Probably getting the players ready for VAR. <laughs> so Do you reckon that's what it yeah, was? Yeah, but I've seen it. It's, it's so tight. But to, to not put your flag up straight away. I mean, th- arguably he's on because there's an he's, arm there. The line, I think the line has said that he didn't know whether Dennis touched it or not. So once he got yeah. confirmation from the referee that Dennis touched it, then he put his flag up. Yeah, it was it, tight though. It was so mm. tight. It was tight, and it was that. So that's the official because at the time it I went heard, in because yeah. it was such a delay. Mm. Have you ever seen anything like? Because he was was he, he was waiting. I remember to see if yeah. Adoy celebrated. So when when Dennis was celebrating, I wasn't because it looked he looked so offside. Yeah, I was looking at the the line of the whole time while we were celebrating. Really, and he just wouldn't put it up. And then after Dennis done his crazy backflip, yeah, it went up. So yeah. maybe if you don't celebrate. Well, this is it. I don't know. Does, how does Dennis feel now about Because I always think sometimes, especially now with VAR, when the player celebrates really hard or they do something really mm-hmm. extravagant or they run the length or whatever mm-hmm. and it's disallowed, do they feel you a feel bit stupid? He Cause may done because he done that crazy backflip. It was an awesome so, like, backflip. Yeah, it was, it nice. was an awesome backflip. I didn't back know he had it in his locker, to be honest. No, I didn't. He said he's got more. He's got more. Well, we always know he's good at jumping. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he apparently yeah, can... It's going to, even in the Premier League now, or it's going to affect people's celebrations. So you're not mm-hmm. going to, you're going to half see people scoring and then not really celebrating and mm-hmm. checking. Yeah. Just in case. It's going to kill those, those beautiful it, yeah, moments. Yeah. It kills, kills the game for me a mm. little bit, VAR. No, I agree. What's your thoughts on VAR? I don't know what I could say, to be honest. I've not been involved in it, no. so I wouldn't know to a certain extent. But some decisions, I think they've got to be clear on the rules. So yeah. I feel like there's a lot of grey areas in VAR, but if they're clear on it and everyone understands, then it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's in its, I think, teething phase, isn't it? There's mm-hmm. some things that need to be ironed out. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it could work going forward. But yeah, uh, so I feel bad for Dennis Adoy there a little bit. But um, our big talking point number two is the fact it was uh, two clean sheets in a row. We are, we, we're grinding out, like you mm-hmm. said, we're grinding out those wins. We're getting them. We're knowing that we can hold on because we have conceded yep. late goals. Um, Hector, obviously, um, started playing these last yep. three games. Would you say, uh, how much of a part does he play in that? Because he's he, he looks like a rock, do you know what I mean, at the yeah, back? Yeah, he is. He's coming and he's done well. Um, there's a bit, a bit of difference. He's got a lot of height there. So corners, we, we know that he can get his head on it. So he's coming and done well when... And hopefully it can continue from him. What's your thoughts on Hector? Well, it speaks for itself, really. Mm. I think he's come in with kept three clean sheets. As a player, when you're not in the side, when you come in, uh, or as a defender especially, if you get three clean sheets, it gives you the confidence. Mm-hmm. And obviously now it's up to uh, Alfie to try and get back in the team. But yeah. there's no way or there's, there's no way that he can be dropped. Do you know what I mean? Because of when the team's winning and keeping clean sheets, mm-hmm. yeah. you don't normally, the manager doesn't normally change it. No. So good on him. Like I say, he's he's, wait, he's been very patient. Mm. He's watched a lot of football. So to come in and 
hit the ground running and, and, and especially the team get three clean sheets. I believe he's man well. of the, voted man of the match as well for the Middlesbrough game, which is excellent. The Middlesbrough and Hull had uh, so few chances. Um, I think uh, Middlesbrough had no shots at all mm -hmm. on target. How much of that is down uh, to, to the defence, would you say, or how much it, can it be put down to Middlesbrough maybe just not having the quality up front? I think it's the whole, whole team. I think we were set out correct. Um, we knew their attacking threats and we nullified it. Um, the lads played a high line and, and, and caught them offside a few times. And, and you could see that at the end of the game, they, they had about four strikers on the pitch. So it's credit to the defence, really. Yeah, fantastic. Right, uh, big talking point number three is Mitro's injury. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like it's not going to... Originally, uh, when it happened, um, we weren't sure how serious it was, how, yeah. long, how long he would be out. It's looking uh, maybe sort of two, three weeks at a push. Mm -hmm. um, turning it into a positive... Um, what's really good is to know you're able to, to play uh, kind of a totally different style and mm -hmm. still dominate games. Mm -hmm. um, that must be, firstly, a, a, a really sort of good feeling, just to know that you can miss a player like Mitro, but also still dominate the games mm -hmm. and play a particular yeah, way. Yeah, we know Mitro's massive. Um, I think he's got 18 league goals, yeah, yeah. which is crazy at this stage of the season. So we know it's a big, a big miss for us, but at the same time, he's out and we know we've got to, we've got to perform on the pitch. and. It brings a different dynamic to the team, I think. Mm. Um, maybe we might be able to get him behind a little bit more and and our press can be a little bit bit better, but I think everyone knows how big he is for us. Um, yeah. And yes, we're going to need him. But at the same time, now he's out, we've got to carry on going and, and get as much wins as we can. Yeah. A similar uh, quality of player, I think, Saha, when mm. he left, did you... Did you feel that straight away, or were yeah. you able to adapt your play without him quite quickly? No, it was difficult because mm. yeah. Louis, Louis, Louis I, he, well, I've gone on record to say he's the best player I played with. He had yeah. everything. He could come short, he could spin, he could left foot, right foot. Mm. It was a massive miss for us. I think his first game was against us and scored. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it was difficult. Uh, that must have hurt. Yeah, but at the end of the day, as players, you know, we were just happy for him because, you know, Gone to, it's gone to one of the biggest clubs in the world, so yeah. you kind of mm. just have to get on with it. As you, it's it's hard in football, you, you get close to people in the dressing room, but when they go and people mm. come in, it's mm. chop and change. You kind of just get used to it. You do, yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Uh, do, how did you enjoy the false nine, though? So obviously, this way mm -hmm. we are playing a, a, a very different way, but you seem to be loving that kind of link-up mm -hmm. play between the forwards and the midfield and yeah. absolutely bossing it. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, um, I played that role at Bristol City a few times. Um, we particularly played a 4-4-2, but some, sometimes I used to play up top of my own. So because I'm originally a midfielder, I kind of understand of dropping into pockets and areas. Yeah but then understand how to get in behind and when to make, make runs. So, yeah, no, I do enjoy that position. Um, the one thing I think, uh, it's fair to say, like I said, the, the, I think the first half of Middlesbrough mm -hmm. was some of the best football I've ever seen, probably for about 35-odd minutes. Then we seemed to kind of slow it down a bit. We, mm -hmm. we, we lost that kind of uh, slight urgency or the pace that we were playing with. Is that a tactical thing or is that more Middlesbrough working us out at that point? No, I don't say? think so. I think... We gave so much energy in that right. first 35 minutes that we really and truly should have been two or three up. Mm. And naturally, you're going to need that second wind, which we didn't get until maybe 65, 70 minutes. Right. Um, so I think it's naturally you're going to fall off the pace a little bit, but we should have been at least two or three up. And it would have been easier from then to control the game. Right, so looking on to our next couple of games, a massive one on Wednesday. How is everyone feeling ahead of the Charlton fixture? <laughs> I think everyone's buzzing because we're off, a, off the back of a few wins, so we just want the games to come thick and far, so, and, and Leeds dropping points is, is perfect for us. Well, this is it. I, if we, uh, I think if we win, we go uh, just a point from the automatics. Is this something that the players uh, are thinking about a lot, the fact that we, are, you know, we could be uh, you know, Wednesday night one point from, from a, a position that, you know, what was it, a month or so ago, mm. were we 12, 13 yeah. points away mm. from? Is that, is that heavy on the minds? Um, I don't think it's... Massively heavy on our minds. We, we know it's there and we know we can put pressure on other teams and, and we're chasing at the moment. So if we carry on putting pressure on and, and getting them, giving them a little scare, then you never know what can happen. Yeah. That might, I mean, did you ever find that that is a, a hindrance in a way? Because I think that, mm. that, that might be, the, I suppose, the, your mentality. I would always think if, you know, going into that game, Charlton, if it was just any other game, you might play, not differently, but mm -hmm. be a little bit more confident almost. If it if it did yeah, you know, almost yeah. if it didn't matter, but when it matters, like when you know, okay, like we, we, you know, we could we could be right up in the yeah. mix again. 
come I think it's Wednesday too soon night. for that. I think it's mm. too yeah. soon for that. I think the, 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 the way the team's set up and the players and the confidence, obviously the confidence of keeping the clean sheets as well, but knowing and half knowing that you know, if you get one, we, we're, we're able to hold on. Mm -hmm. The only, only thing I'd say Nick, is, is if you keep just getting the one and you don't get the second, it can, can linger a little bit. Mm. But I'd still feel mm. we're on the end of getting two or three or four. Beat. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if I turned on at half-time and we were three, four nil up against someone. No. Because it, those games come, you know. Mm -hmm. They yeah. come where they, they, everything just seems to fall into place. Every strike seems to go in in contact. And then, like you say, uh, the other team will have to then come out. So you can change the pace of it and then mm -hmm. hit them on an attack. So mm -hmm. they, that second goal is important for us. Yeah. And I believe that once we start getting that, you start seeing us cruise teams. We're slightly, I think we, we struggle a little bit chasing games. If we go back early, I think if, if we go behind early. Again, what does that do uh, to a player? Because sometimes when we concede early, and we have conceded early, mm -hmm. I think Reading was, was mm -hmm. a quite early time to concede. It, it, it then you always think we can get back in, mm -hmm. but at the same point, it does change kind of how you're playing. I think it's um, the other team's mentality because they know what we're a good footballing team. They know mm -hmm. we're a very good squad, and they know if they get a, a goal, they got something to hold on to. So I think naturally they start working even harder. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So not necessarily us. I think as the other team get an extra boost going one nil up against us. Yeah, uh, we're also at a point in the season now where. I mean, for me personally, I always start that first half of the season. I kind of ignore the table a bit. Mm -hmm. I just go, you know, you just focus on the games. You know, I've been a Fulham fan too long to sort of um, get too caught mm -hmm. up early on. But now you're at a point where, you know, like, you know, tonight I'll be keeping an eye on the, the West Brom game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, love following uh, uh, Leeds bottling it again at QPR. Um, for you, are you now constantly as a team keeping an eye on the other results, or are you just totally focused on what's happening in front of you? I'm focused on myself, but at the same time, you have one eye on, on what the other team's doing, because um, it can give you a massive constant confidence booster as yeah. well. Yeah, um, Leeds obviously losing well, it was a, a nice, pleasant surprise, and we'll see what happens with West Brom tonight. Yeah, is, it okay? is there a bit of banter in the dressing room about Leeds falling apart? Is it? Because uh, they seem to... Uh, no, I don't, no, I don't think the, player, the players know that it can mm. come around and bite you. Yeah. So yeah. I think the less said, just get on with what you're doing yeah. because you don't want to start saying stuff about Leeds and then like in this league come on you can lose two or three in a row but you can go and win mm -hmm. like we've done eight in a row because the games come so freaking fast like yeah. we looked at the fixture list February how many, packed man even though yeah. I said Seven March games, yeah. yeah even though I said March look at the games we've got in March it's quite February could be a yeah. totally different table yeah yeah totally so yeah, I think it's just quietly gone within, within a week the championships that mad it could yeah. change yeah, it's, it's three games in a week, so. Babe, there's so many. Uh, I think so many people almost writing off the automatics a, a month ago. I listened to all the Fulham podcasts. Mm -hmm. A lot of them going right. We'd just be focusing on on um, you know the playoff places, mm -hmm. getting in there, trying not to play Brentford yeah. <laughs> in the playoffs. Um, that it is just it's just quite extraordinary. Even I, I don't think I expected it to turn around that quickly mm -hmm. and to get to a point where, uh, you know, because under under yeah. Slav, the football playing under Slav, it took a while chasing Cardiff. But, and yeah. we got that, and it would have been the last game of the season mm -hmm. if we had won or even drawn. I think we would have then got into the automatics, but it was a constant struggle mm -hmm. to constantly chase. I, did, I didn't expect Leeds and West Brom both to kind of hit this, the bad form at the same time. No, and not so, yeah. So, but you know, this league, you can, it happens to everyone. You can't normally go on a winning run throughout the whole season yeah. because yeah. the games are thick and fast with injuries, suspensions. The, the Christmas, obviously, January period is very hectic. So. Uh, we've kind of hopefully had ours and we yeah. can carry on now and crack on but you know there's Brentford have they really had theirs I'm not sure mm. uh, Leeds haven't had theirs they're having it now West Brom even if they win they, if they win tonight they'll be back up there they're, well not up there but they'll have that little bit yeah, extra yeah, yeah. cushion mm -hmm. so it can change within days and weeks in this league I think you just have to try you just tell it you're telling me mm. not to get too excited yeah it's the championship it's hard to get too excited it's unpredictable. So, yeah. It's so unpredictable. So concentrate yeah. on ourselves and we'll be fine. That's it. That's what I like to hear. Uh, Man City at the Etihad, that's on Sunday. Mm -hmm. How do you approach a game like that? Now, firstly, for you, I mm -hmm. mean, it's 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 kind of, you know, you've scored at the Etihad already. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, in the cup as well. Yeah. How, how was that first? How did that feel scoring at the that Etihad? That was nice. Um, I had a lot of family there, a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, this is a semi-final of, of a cup. So it was, it was a massive game for us. And to go in at halftime, 1-0 up, Mm. We was in dreamland. Um, they had to bring on Aguero, and they ended up winning 2-1. So 
we was hard done by. We yeah. was really hard done by. We didn't have a bad second yeah. leg either. Though, no, we you? didn't. Yeah. Like, we, we went toe to toe with them, to be honest, and we, we come up with our heads high. Yeah. But how do you? So how would you uh, approach a game like this? Is it? Do you sort of see it as a free pass, or um, you know, are the lads going to look at this as a, as a genuine attempt to, to beat Man City on their turf? Uh, we go out thinking we can win the game, and that's what we're going to try and do. Um, you want to be playing against the best players in the world at the end of the day. And mm. it's a chance for us to put ourselves against players like that and, and show our quality. And do you think you'll go in and enjoy it? Um, the reason I ask is, it, will it affect your comp- if, if Say we go there and we lose, will it affect the confidence of a team that are, you know, have won three in a row? Because and, <laughs> and, uh, the, the Villa game, winning yeah. Villa, even though it was, it was yeah. the cup, it seemed to be a real lift and a real boost. I think the Villa game is different because we know we can really win. Like, yeah. We know that they're not really a, a better team than us in that sense but Man City are on another level mm. so you know what you're up against and you know that you're going to have to put in a half decent performance yeah how did you approach cut games when you were sort of you know, I always I always I know you wanted to go the well. Giants mm. in your yeah, day yeah I always well. wanted to to win the cup because yeah. at the end of the day you play to lift to win trophy. to win yeah, lift yeah. the trophy oh. obviously when you when I was growing up the FA Cup was, you know yeah. it wasn't yeah. there wasn't the Premier League then so it was yeah. like I want to win the FA Cup, so yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, it all depends because certain cup games you, you can put out different teams, stronger teams, weaker teams. So I always wanted to play the cup games, yeah. and like hopefully both sides put out their strongest side, and, and we can see how, how far we've come. Because yeah. I obviously I've gone on record, I still believe this team now is yeah. better than the team that played in the Premier League last season. Yeah, so we can pick, like I say, Craig Crystal Palace went there last week, yeah, and. What's, I don't really see. Obviously, they've got some good players. In well, it's probably not a bad time to play yeah. Manchester mm-hmm. City, really. The, the, I think they're not. Mm. I don't think they know they're not going to win the league now. They're not going to give up. They won't publicly say we're giving up, but they they know they're not going to win. So they're going to put all their eggs in the in the cups. They got obviously they're in the Carling Cup semi final. They're still in the Champions League. So I think they will put a strong side out. Right. But that weekend team is still yeah. uh, Agu- uh, he- Jesus playing and not Aguero. Yeah. And De Bruyne not playing and Foden coming. <laughs> it's, so they, there's no real weekend side no, for them. No, no, but no, of course. Uh, but I prefer to play the real side because if you play the weekend side, they've, still, they've got a point to prove. So they're mm. going to work even harder. They want to get the shirt and, and start the next game. So I, I prefer it to be best side versus best side. Yeah. Mm. And do you, do you know uh, if you'll be playing or how, how close to the game will you know if you're going to we'll be probably, We'll probably the, start the um, building up on <clears throat> maybe Friday. Okay. Um, you may be starting now, but definitely on a Saturday you'll find out if you're starting or not. It's got, it's got to be in Scott's head that you've already scored there, though, surely. He's got uh, to have that there uh, going. He so. knows what it is yeah. to score there. He's done yeah. that. He's ticked that box. Yeah, That's a big so. part of it. It is, it is. I hope so. And I would, like I said, you want to play against the best players in the world. Yeah. So I'm happy to play that. Fantastic. And like I say, I think the I think the important thing is not letting, it, no matter the results, not letting it affect the confidence mm-hmm. of the league, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously uh, uh, Huddersfield is, is the... the the uh, first game in February as well. Mm-hmm. So certainly the next handful of games in the league. That is the Riverside. Uh, yeah. I don't know what part of it, but apparently that bit's been knocked down. I don't know if you've heard that. Um, so uh, they're all very winnable. Mm-hmm. Do you look at it like that, or are you purely a one game at a time? Literally, you've got to take one game as it comes and, and put your focus all in that. Um, like I said, you know the league's crazy. Yeah. You know you can't be thinking three games ahead, two games ahead, you literally got to focus on your next game and, and try to get as many points as you can. Yeah, fantastic. Right, let's talk a little bit about you uh, joining Fulham uh, at the start of the season. Why Fulham? Um, I, I love the place, to be honest with you. Um, I've always wanted to play. I've had good games here when I used to play for Bristol City and it was a massive opportunity to come here and play nice football and hopefully get promoted. And you, you must have some incredible memories from playing with Bristol City. Just, uh, you were there from such a young age. Mm-hmm. What are your fond memories of, of, of being at Bristol City? Um, obviously, my debut, that cup run we went on in the, in the um, I don't want to say Carling Cup, that's all, what's the Carabao Cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we just had a, a close knit group. Um, I wasn't there in the League One promotion season, and I think they won the, the cup as well. I was on loan at Plymouth at the time. Yeah. Um, but we had a close knit group. Who really enjoyed each other's company and we played some great football. And how did you, uh, how do you find this? Is a similar question that I asked Joe Bryan actually, um, playing the uh, three stand stadium. Because mm-hmm. uh, were you at Bristol City when it was they were they were taken down? Sorry, were you on loan at that point? Um, no, I was. I was there. And how how yeah. was that for you? I mean, do do does it affect you now playing 
here and knowing you're missing a you know a whole stand. Not not really. Despite think... the fact there's pictures of you yeah. and Harry. <laughs> no, oh. there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've noticed there. that. I didn't know. It's Bristol City though. Yeah. But still, we'll, we'll brush past that. Yeah. We'll um, now, nah, once you're out there playing, you don't really notice it. To be honest, um, there's still a decent atmosphere, so it's it's fine. Yeah. And you're enjoying your 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 time at Fulham. Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's made it easier that Joe was here and kind of helped me get settled in at the time and. Yeah, get the hit the floor running really. Was that a big part of your reason for for coming here, Joe, or was it was it was there always that kind of idea of wanting to play for for a club like Fulham? Um, it was interest before, um, and it didn't work out before, but now there was a massive opportunity for it to happen, so I wanted to take it. Excellent, and so useful as well for um, you know for our staff and management to to be able to ask someone like Joe, what's he actually like? Mm-hmm. Be brutally yeah. honest, right? Yeah, I think a lot a lot goes into recruitment now, so it's always easier if you've got someone who's played with a person because they're mm-hmm. going to ask you questions of what's that personality like, what they like in the dressing room, yeah, uh, what are their habits, you know. Mm-hmm. It, there's so much that goes into recruitment now, so it's yeah. probably good that Joe is here to help, you know, convince him to come. Fantastic. Right, uh, it's now time mm-hmm. for your starting eleven. Okay, and this is where we ask you a series of uh, quick questions to get to know the man behind the boots. Mm-hmm. I might be uh, throwing some your way as well. I know you've answered a few of these in the past, but we've got some new ones just for oh, you good. to keep you excited. Yeah, liven up a little yeah, bit. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, Bobby Decker, David Reed, are yep. you ready? Mm-hmm. Shoe size? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Go to takeaway? Ooh, a Caribbean takeaway. Yeah? Nice. Yeah. Is there a particular one close to, to where you are? Um, I don't want to get it wrong. Is it JRK? I think it is. Caribbean Kitchen. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Musical guilty pleasure? Well, I don't have any. No? To be honest. Yeah. Totally credible? Very credible. No. R&B, hip-hop, all that type of... Oh, respect. All right, yeah. fine. Well, I mean, you must have some absolute rotters. Yeah, but right, let's get that. No, it's not. It's not about me, is it? It's not about me. <laughs> no, I'm thinking. Come on, what you got? I've got. Some, How old's your daughter? She's 15, but when she put music on my phone, she'd be about eight, nine. So oh, okay, probably so high school musical. Yeah. Yeah. And do you Hannah find Montana? that you, you hum along to it a little bit? If it comes on sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I crank might, that I up might a not little skip, bit. It might not skip it straight away. No, yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> Throw a few shapes to it. Well, you know. Sort of stuff. You know me. All right, drink of choice on a night out. Um, I'm a big fan of rum. Yeah. Um, Ray and nephew. Yeah, with ginger beer. Oh yeah, they're, well yeah. they're dark and stormies, aren't they? Is that a dark and stormy? I don't oh, know. Ray and nephew's that? like petrol. <laughs> is it, is it really? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, pro- it's a proper drink, mate. It, it will, yeah. yeah. Fire on the chest. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, right, but I like yeah. it with with the ginger beer. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit of lime in there. Yeah, nice. yeah. yeah. I've not had that. But oh yeah, that that, or a bit yeah. of mint as well. It's really good. I do like a bit of rum. Um, if you weren't a footballer, what would you be? Ah. Oh. Um, something within sport, I don't know. Maybe helping people within sport. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go for the cliche uh, PE teacher or or something like that, but I think helping people in sport, I think. Uh, your sister mm-hmm. uh, is into into politics. I yeah. know uh, we, we asked um, uh, the Fulham fans to uh, send in their questions. Mm-hmm. Got loads of questions. We're going to get to those in a moment. Um, but your sister, she's an MP for Battersea? Yeah. That's fantastic. Was um what an area, by the way. Yeah, amazing. Actually, right? Yeah, born and bred. So, oh, is that yeah? Oh, is, is, that, yeah. is that where you're from? Yeah. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Sister's the MP. For that. That's <laughs> how cool is that? A few things to ask her, then. You know, <laughs> so we'll talk about straight, more straight down the barrel. Need more youth clubs, don't we? More youth clubs? Mm. I can. I can call yeah, we need more. Youth. We used to have a great youth club, uh, where we actually got scouted for Fulham. Really? Yeah, and Luke Cornwall. Remember Luke Cornwall yeah. made his debut? Yeah, it's uh, Battersea Sports Centre. Still there? Junction. I'm not too sure yet, but obviously the guy who used to do it, he's passed away now, God rest his soul. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, it was good. Good to have the youth centres and we kept all the kids off the streets. The same as well, yeah, so yeah, me growing up, the youth yeah. centres, they were the best best yeah. things to keep keep people off the streets. And back in Bristol now, the same one I used to go to, is, it's not really there anymore. Yeah. No, it's such shame. a shame. It really yeah. is mm-hmm. a shame. Are you into politics? Is that something, I mean, you even said, I mean, helping kids is one thing. And that's, mm-hmm. There's a kind of political slant to that. Would you ever... Follow your sister's route and get um, into politics. Not necessarily. Your sister, no. Marsha Dekadova, yeah. by the way, is worth, um, worth mentioning. I'm not massive on politics, to be honest. No. Um, you never get together at Christmas and have uh, full on arguments about politics at all? No, that. we stay away from that. It's strictly family time. Yeah, we do nice. tease her now and then, but that's right. Yeah, we've got so many subjects banned in our family house at the moment. Obviously, I've got a list of things. Currently, it's the royal family is now added to the list that we're not allowed to talk about yeah. any of the royal yeah. family stuff. So, uh, one of those things. Oh, that's amazing, and congratulations, sister. That's incredible. Um, uh, the first football player you admired growing up? I think it was Michael Owen, being a Liverpool fan. 
growing up, it was Michael Owen. He was electric, he scored goals. Mm. I remember he had a TV programme I always used to watch. It was random. It was just back in the kids' bedroom and Michael Owen was on a poster and used to, to pop out. Really? It was a poster, yeah. I don't remember what it was called, but yeah, Michael I Owen was. I remember that, no. <laughs> I used to watch The Fun House when I was younger. I remember oh, that, yeah, Pat Sharp. Me too, yeah. and the Twins. Or, or the only football one I remember when I was growing up was... Uh, is it on Channel 4, the Go, Go Lazio, that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. Paul Gascoigne and that went to it. At least. So I used to that, love Italian football when I was younger. But yeah, that was, that was yeah, the Italian one. Italian. They were great. Yeah. What was the, um, what was the Renford Rejects? Do you remember that? Yeah, I didn't know. A friend of mine was the yeah. manager. Oh, was with, he? with the stick, yeah. Oh, wow. Might be before my time. Do you not sure. remember Renford Rejects? No, no, I'm I'm showing age now. <laughs> but Funhouse, man. Yeah, you yeah. must remember Funhouse. No, no, see. I'm showing my age, man. Well, yeah, we're similar, aren't we? Not far yeah, off. Yeah, 40, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a little bit you got quite But fun a house, time. man. Pat Sharp when he had the long yeah, hair. Yeah, it was a good time. Sorry, mate. We'll go out yeah, yeah, of some great, yeah. great stuff there with fun house. You used to get so yeah. many great prizes. Yeah. We'll finish this after. Yeah, we no, uh, Okay, so the most famous person in your phone? I'm going to go with my sister. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to go with my sister. Sure. There you go, Marsha. I like Sweet. that. Fantastic. Um, do you have any irrational fears? Um, I hate creepy crawlies. Yeah? I hate spiders, bugs, cockroaches, all of them. All I, of them I, across the board? Yeah. Did you have a bad experience with them back in the day, or is it just... Um, no, I just hate them, and Joe's the worst because he knows it. <laughs> so oh, if there's any yeah. bug around, he literally will just pick it up, and he will chase me. I remember he just always, he always chased me with them, and I'm off. I'm literally... And I'm you gone. still call him a friend? Yeah. I don't it's know terrible, why, but yeah, yeah it's, it Joe always gets me with them. Oh, see, I don't Daddy, know. I, I, Daddy I'm long not... legs, all of them. Really? Yeah, I hate them. And what about yourself with irrational fears? Heights. Really? Yeah. How are you on a plane? No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay on the plane. It's when I'm walking somewhere and there's, you can actually physically fall over, like mm -hmm. a balcony or something like that. No, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or bungee jump. I remember once we was, we was in Ayanapa, <laughs> off season, <laughs> and we were playing two touch, and whoever lost. It was about five or six ex footballers. Uh, Is this with Fulham? No, no, it was just a random holiday. I think it was Jay Boyfroyd was there, Robbie Keane, Clinton Morrison, there was a few. And whoever lost had to go and walk all the way around and do the bungee jump. And that was probably the most scared I've ever been in my life. <laughs> so I'm guessing you didn't lose? Well, no, my two touch game was quite strong. So. <laughs> nice. Oh, my yeah, yeah. word. So, yeah. I could never do it. Mm. Heights is my worst thing. Yeah. All right. Like jumping okay. out of a plane, I couldn't think of anything worse. No. See me, I uh, I don't think I can do it, but I want to do it. Yeah. You want you want to? I think yeah. It, yeah. What a bungee jump or jump? No, no, a bungee jump. No, I don't want no part of that. But no. jumping out a plane, I feel like I want to do it, but I don't think I can actually come to grips with free falling. No. That feeling in the stomach. And the, it's not good. Not for me. No, I'm with you. I couldn't do that. I can do heights, but not so bad with bugs. I used to have a pet scorpion. Mm -hmm. That wasn't too bad. And a couple of snakes. But anyway, that's by the by. Uh, right, if you could have a yacht, say you're given a yacht, mm -hmm. what would you call it? What would you name it? You've done yours. What I can't remember what I called it now. Uh, I think it was just yeah. a shrug, wasn't it? Yeah, bothered. Bothered. Yeah, or something like bothered. that, yeah. Bothered, yeah. Um, uh, I'd probably call it the Renzist. And that's for people that know me, so Joe will know this, the Renzist. What's that mean? The so Renzist. basically there's a name called Renzel, which um, Rick Ross used to call himself and for banter I used to I used to say that was my name right. at Bristol City yeah for a while and then everyone started calling me the Renzist so nice it's a, it's a good name good it's name a good for a yacht that's yeah. strong powerful mm -hmm. it's powerful it yeah. is powerful uh, who is the best dressed member of the Fulham squad best dressed you can name yourself right no can't have yourself no, no. no. I wouldn't know what I was about to say probably you who was it back in the day did you say who was the sharpest I have to think about this. Oh, yeah. There's some bad dresses in our dressing room. Well, this is Louis by Morta used to yeah? be quite. Yeah, he used to be quite slick. Quite slick. All right. Yeah, Barry Howe's terrible dresser. Mm -hmm. Silver Silver Van Lisley, Lidbinski used to look like he sold the big issue. <laughs> no, the guys outside the tube station. Help no me disrespect help to me. anyone that sells the big issue, yeah, but you can just, I know exactly what you're saying yeah, straight away. Exactly, right? you know. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry if I've offended no, you. No, I'm, sure, back, I'm yeah. sure you haven't at all, but that's. Um, is he really doing like he's so Bad, big yeah, issue? bad. Yeah, you wouldn't know he was a footballer. You never used to shave, his hair was everywhere. Yeah. All right, the lads used to say, oh, the bins are that way, mate. Really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was bad. What about yourself with the current squad? Who's the best dressed? I do have the worst dressed next as well. Uh, as our as our final 
as our final? Best Jess. Um, it all goes on people who are, are trying. Trying too hard? Not trying too hard, just trying. So okay, all right, go on. I'm a, I, I like to wear track suits and be comfy. Right. Um, so people like TC, um, Josh now and then, Stevie Sess. Yeah. They'll have a bit of a go. No, it's all right. So, so uh, worst dress member of the Fulham squad? Um, Dennis Adoy. Is, why Dennis Adoy? It's strange. The combinations are yeah. very strange. So today he had a, a turtleneck on. Yeah. Which was quite smart, but then he had a big woolly jacket over it. It, it made no sense. Like he could have just, he could have just had the turtleneck, <laughs> fine. But the jacket over it, it was a green, oh. woolly jacket. Mm-hmm. It was it was strange. Right, so that's a bit dodgy. Someone once told me that uh, a turtleneck is like being strangled by a really weak person. <laughs> and ever since then, I just I never. I, mean, uh, I never. I, I couldn't pull off a turtleneck anyway because my head's too big. Uh, my head's I look too like small. one of these bubble heads. Yeah, mine's too small, so I, I couldn't pull it off either. There's not many people that can pull <laughs> off uh, pull off a turtleneck, and apparently Dennis Adoy yeah. can't either. Uh, so there we go. Right, we uh, we tweeted the uh, the fun fans earlier. Asking if there are any questions for you, uh, I think we're all right. We're gonna we're gonna try and wrap through as many of these mm-hmm. as possible. Um, uh, so here we go. This is what these are the the ones that we could. There were a few ones we we, we had to avoid, uh, as you can imagine, yeah, for obvious reasons. Not, uh, there was a lo- loads of love yep. for you. That's the important thing. Um, okay, so here we go. So Richard Bamber wants to know your best story about Joe Bryan, other um, than the fact that he punished you with bugs. <laughs> we was young. I think we was about. I'm going to say 9, 10, 11, around the majors. Um, we was at training in, at Bristol City. And I remember there was a, a deer that, that ran across the pitch. Okay. Yeah, and I remember Joe was rapid at the time. I remember one of the coaches saying, Joe, quickly go grab the deer. And yeah, it, it was, at the moment, me probably saying it now doesn't sound funny, but at the time it was, it was hilarious. And I think Joe went to actually go. And uh, did he get close? No, nah, I don't think he did. Oh, no. okay. That would have been a bit, a bit dangerous, but yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say, they can <laughs> kick yeah. and stuff, can't health they? Is, um, health and safety nowadays, I don't think you get away with that. You can't so, really yeah, get no. wrestling a deer yeah. to the ground. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> um, Philip Cahill, then, this, this kind of goes quite nicely hand in hand. Who's faster, you or Joe? Back in the day, he, it would have been Joe, but. Now he's definitely more powerful. Um, that's an interesting one. I don't know. He's quicker at the moment. Slowing down a bit. You never just just want to yeah, race we, him. We, we might put it to the test and see. If you could, if you could put your money on it, who do you think would win right now? Hundred meter dash. You versus him. Ooh, that was his meters. nickname back in the day. Hundred meter da- oh, dash. Dash. Was it really? Yeah. So I'm gonna go with Joe. Probably. You're gonna go with Joe. Yeah. All right. There we go. Uh, Laura Rad. She uh, she tweeted, "Is it nice having a Jamaica teammate in the Fulham squad now? And how has uh, Big Hector settled in?" Yeah, it's nice. Um, to be fair, I haven't been on any international duties with him yet. Um, but in the future, I'm sure we will. But no, it's, it's nice to, to have Heck in the team. And he's I been say, is he settling in? But it's more. I mean, he's been there since since. Uh, yeah, he's uh, been there for a while. August, so it's he, yeah, it was just literally him playing games. So yeah, yeah he settled in perfectly. Fantastic. Uh, Russ Goldman, he is uh, the guy that does Cottage Talk, one of the big podcasts out there, following podcasts. He's just said, I am curious how difficult it is to play a different role each match. And as he, uh, um, as he has played several positions mm-hmm. based on the needs of the club. Uh, so is it difficult to, to constantly be sort of switching up positions? Not necessarily. It's just knowing your role at that time. Um, I'm an attacking player, so first and foremost, I want to I wanna attack. So whether it's on the left wing, whether it's up top or, or midfield, my, f- my first thought is to attack, so it's not not really different. Is it, would you say that's your preference, is being an attacker? We, yeah. had, lo- we, actually, we had loads of messages about your, your preferred position. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, lo- there's so many of them. So, yeah, so you'd say an attacker is, is your yeah. thing. Okay. Uh, do you have, this is from Ben, be it sweary, uh, do you have a match day routine, and if so, what is it? I try and stay away from routines. I don't want to really get into... Superstitions. Yeah, right? superstitions. I literally just go out there and try my hardest and, and try and enjoy the game. So I try to stay away from that. Do you ever have a routine? Uh, not really, not a routine. I always used to like coming out kind of second to last for some reason. Mm. So that is a superstition, isn't it? Yeah. Did you ever feel that if you didn't, was it like vital that you did it? No, it wasn't vital. I tried to keep it to that, but then... Stuff must creep in. You must have lucky socks or think, oh, I need to do this. I, you know, I ate this before no, that game. No, because I, 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 I always cut the socks. Back in the day, you never used to have the... No, I think they cut them for the players, yeah, but I really always cut, used to yeah. cut the socks, and Pudsy used to hammer me. Sorry, so I don't know if that was a... Like, you, you know, the socks, I used to, like, wearing normal white 
socks, mm -hmm. and then the actual socks, I used to cut the thing off and then just... It's comfier. It's comfier. It's comfier yeah. Oh, is it real? So you don't have them in your boot? So you... No. Oh, no, really? No, yeah. Yeah. So you do you, oh, <laughs> do you have the bottoms of your socks? Is this something that everyone no, no, knows? No, no, so you, yeah. you'd have yeah. normal ankle socks on. Yeah. So... And then just yeah, the top, like the, and the, the top invisible bit of the, the, the kicks yeah. up, yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that across like pretty much every football? It is now, yeah. yeah. It never used to be. And used to get hammered by Puzzy the kit man because he used to cut all the socks. Mm. Really but now they obviously everyone does it, so they just taper them. So you just put the the actual colour of the kit sock mm -hmm. over the top of your ankle socks. It is comfier. Oh, I feel like I've learned something. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right, yeah, yeah. is it? I've uh, got a couple of tweets here from Jimmy Chicken. Um, nice. Yeah, he <laughs> wants to know, firstly, why don't you have a thick Bristol accent? I think there's, there's a couple areas in Bristol that don't have don't have the Bristolian accent. Okay, um, which part of the area? Where, where I'm from Eastern. Eastern okay. St. Paul's don't really have... You know, the, that proper, proper nah, thing going for on. for whatever reason, I don't know. No. But unfortunately, I don't have it. You, you must have, did you try really hard to not let that... <laughs> <laughs> not let it soak in as well? It's a funny it's accent. Well, yeah, it's yeah well. you really, it's solid. I've done nothing against the Bristol accent. <laughs> no, no, it's a great yeah, accent. Yeah. It's fantastic. But, you know, you know, you must have been hanging around with people that all, you know, went all a little bit like that. That not is necessarily, accent, right? <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. no, not, not really. No? Honest, no. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. Right, here we go. Uh, who would you say is the most hardworking player at the club and why? That is from LFC Ryan. Um, I'm going to say Dennis Adoy. Yeah. He's everywhere. Yeah. Annoyingly, like today, he stepped on my toe and it was just an inconvenience. Yeah. Dennis Adoy. And he's, he's actually fast becoming, I think, one, one of the, the, the best players, one of the real solid players mm -hmm. of the club as yeah, well. Yeah, he's very consistent. Yeah, yeah, and over 100 appearances now, I believe, yeah. for Fulham. Yeah. And, uh, you know, scored some important goals, made some important challenges, you know. Fair play to him. Mm -hmm. Looks terrible in a turtleneck, though. Yeah. We need to always... Don't forget the green, the green jacket. jacket. And yeah. the green yeah, jacket. The green we need jacket. to always remind ourselves yeah. that. Um, uh, Will Oakley, you've kind of already touched on these um, questions from Will, but why did uh, a move to Fulham look good to you? You've kind of already sort of said that. Yeah, and what is the best part about being at Fulham? That's both from Will there. Um, the, the style of football is very nice and yeah. enjoyable. And it suits me down to the ground. And I want to carry on progressing and getting better as a player here and, and hopefully take it to the next level. Um, and I just enjoy being in London at the moment. I've got a lot of family here, so I'm surrounded by my loved ones. So it's good. Yeah, that must uh, makes a real difference, surely, mm -hmm. as a player. You don't want to be far off and far away from, from friends and family and stuff. Yep. Uh, Luca Clark, this was lovely. Does Joe Bryan lend you books that he finishes reading? No, but I've I seen a tweet and I'm going to ask him to, to, to slide to, ones he, yeah, he's yeah. used now. Yeah. Make sure he gives you good books because yeah. he couldn't name like a good book. He no, named his worst book, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he didn't. He was like, I hate this, so don't let him give me. I can't remember what it was called now. Yeah, he said yeah. it was rubbish. Mm. So don't let him palm you off with that, oh, whatever no it was. Um, uh, Sam FFC1 I said, how did it feel getting that first goal for the club? Versus Dub. It felt like it was a. It, it yeah. was, we knew it was coming, mm -hmm. um, and it felt. I, I tell you what was really nice yeah. as a, as a fan um, uh, of of Fulham and, and normally uh, when a player comes in and they're they're not scoring, fans mm -hmm. can get restless and get annoyed. Mm -hmm. There was so much love for you and mm -hmm. so much support, and I think you were doing such an incredible job, uh, you know, without scoring mm -hmm. that it felt like uh, just this just. Uh, yeah. Everyone was just so happy yeah. when you when you actually scored. And Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, and I felt the love and I appreciate it from from all the fans. Um, it was more of a relief to get that first goal because I've had a lot of chances. Keepers are pulled off well. These yeah, and I just knew it was coming. I just keep getting in the same areas and keep doing the mm. doing the same things and it will come. Fantastic. Uh, and I think we'll end with this. This is uh, a lovely question mm -hmm. from Follow Fulham Away, Bobby. Why are you so beautiful? <laughs> Who's it from, sorry? Follow Fulham, at Follow Fulham Away. Why are you so beautiful? I don't know if it's a male or female, uh, but thank That's you very much. He's not going to tell you why, though, yeah. but thank you. Uh, so there we go. That's it for your Monday night Fulham fix. Uh, once again, thank you very much to uh, Sean Davis. Um, and to our guest this week, Bobby Decker, Dover, Reed. Uh, best of luck as well with Wednesday and with the uh, future games, hopefully... Uh, uh, you know, come the end of the season, we can we can meet up again and talk about uh, very very exciting times ahead. Yep, thanks for having me. Brilliant. Uh, so we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Until then, see ya.